Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo. And today we're gonna talk about how car guys uh, basically also have to be truck guys. Because if you wanna race all over the country and you wanna buy stuff in Tennessee and then drag it up to your friend in Alaska, you're gonna need something that can tow. And guess what, is your car gonna run all the time? Absolutely not, you're gonna need your truck to either tow it when it's broken or drive you to get to work and whatever else you need it for. Here on Stay Tuned, we've been branching out, getting into bigger and more fun adventures. Uh, and I had a truck, but it wasn't really a tow machine. I had a 2000 Ford F250 V10 gas truck, and we towed my Firebird down to Florida with it for sick week, and honestly, it got worse gas mileage than the Firebird did. It's not the kind of thing you can really just take anywhere in the continental United States and not worry about it. So I need to upgrade, I sold that thing, and it's time to find the perfect truck. Please take a second and go over to the Stay Tuned merch store. We've got a rack of shirts from the original Stay Tuned shirt, Angelo's Gym. We're going to lose the shop and my new Firebird shirt. Check it out and there's lots of stickers too. So I told my friend Brendan that and he reminded me he might have just the thing. This is his old truck that's been sitting for a while. And why would I even consider replacing a 2000 Ford with what looks to be a 1978 Eight. Ford? Because that's not exactly what you're looking at. Your eyes deceive you. It's the first time. Boom. This is why underneath this truck, this 78 Ford is actually a 97? 97 Ram 3500 dually. Yeah. Manual, hot yeah. shot, made to tow, rear wheel drive. Big turbo injectors. Yep. Six in a row, ready to tow. So this is the last thing we built in my Northeast Philly drift racing shop and we knocked it together in like 10 days. You had a crazy idea, you bought both trucks and you brought it in and we were like, let's do it. And I was like, I know I'm not gonna live here long. Let's get cracking. And we just went hardcore, long days, longer nights. And I never done a body swap before, but we figured it out and it turned out awesome. You did figure out already that like the wheelbases are the same. Yeah. It's, a, it's a possibility. And we just went from there. We wound up moving the motor back. I remember that. Um, we have to make the body mounts. We knocked the body mounts off the Ford frame, welded them onto the Dodge frame. Everything turned out really well. And yeah. it was just up and I up. I mean, it came together, I think, the morning you moved to California. Yeah. Uh, and then you were off and rocking. And I towed, a, I towed a Mike's Duster back to Brooklyn that next day. Yep. And then I towed your Demon to California, grabbed the Cuda in Kentucky, towed that to California. Yep. I brought the Demon, my Roadrunner, back from L.A. Yeah. Uh, you actually used you as, like, a secondary tow vehicle on the bigger HRG shoots if Brennan was in town. Yeah. Brennan's kind of a rolling stone. He just got back from the coast of Sardinia. That's, I don't know, is that near Monaco? Where is that? Yeah, South coast of Italy? Off Italy, yeah. Sure, whatever. Anyway, Brennan can't be tied down. So if he was in town with the truck, which he often was, we would use him and the truck. He would help us by bringing stuff from like, you know, the tech center in LA at, at Hot Rod Garage out to the track. He towed my demon, maybe the bone marrow. You did tow the S10, the S10 and, and the Malibu at the same time yep. when I bought those back to PA. I mean, this thing is... And they were is... packed with parts. I, I clocked in over 20,000 pounds on the scales that trip. Yeah. This thing's a beast. It's been killer. It's actually not the first time we've been up here to try to bring it home. Uh, here's what that was like. Man. It's going to be some work. Refresh this thing. Camper Special F250. 1978, it has to be the super cab to line up with the Dodge. And I think the Dodge also has to be extended cab. That gets your wheelbase basically the, exactly the same. So you can take the body one off, make a bunch of mounts, drop it on, integrate everything and have a body swap truck. So this is a camber special. Camber specials have all these cool tie down hooks, these anchors, all the trim. It's got those clearance lights on top. Got these big gnarly mirrors on it. This would have been like the top, top, top of the line in 1978. It had, the, the Dodge that we put it on was a dually. It was like a hot shot truck. It actually just had a flat bed here, if I recall correctly, with a gooseneck or a fifth wheel in the middle of it. So um, we went out and just got these steel wheels. That's why they're so flushed out, because it was the dually that the 80, I think, is a little bit longer than the 70. And uh, it looks sweet, but she's clearly, clearly seen some action. You get up in here, it's same, more of the same stuff. Had these like super pimp seats when he got it. I don't know if this is official 70s fur or if this was done later in the 80s. It's got some wood grain touches. All the stuff is like the top of the line. It was an automatic truck on the column 460 with the, the Ford automatic in it. Light out back windows. I don't know if it even came with shoulder belts. He might have put those in.
manual now. I think this is the NV4500. The six speed, I can't, I think this is the 45. Yeah, this giant block here was all welded in this crazy under bumper thing. That was just part of the old hotshot truck and we just left it, kind of finished it off that way. Man, she's rough and rugged. It's got electric lift pump, so let's see. figured after Russo Mercedes, let's get something with no computers. This thing will run on no wires. Don't do a good job of this coordinating. This window goes down, right? That one goes down. You can go on the link right here. Grab yourself a, we're going to lose the shop shirt. I feel like... Okay. Putting the clutch in, trying to get her into gear. Clutch has resistance, but it might be stuck. Okay. I think it was stuck to the uh, flywheel there. We got her broke free. Find out where we can go to get some fuel. I have to make sure she's got some brakes. Oh, something. Not really. Oh, that's a lot of pedal movement. Oh, God. Now it goes all the way to the floor. Oh, God. Hold on. Yeah, that's probably not ideal. Far. All right. Bust a line out or something? I don't know, maybe like a mass, like a slave cylinder in the back, like a, excuse me, like a wheel cylinder. Maybe like a wheel cylinder exploded. I was pumping the brakes and they were doing a little bit and now they're not doing anything. We're just rolling backwards in gear. Yeah. I'm gonna put the clutch in and just. Oh, now you did it. What? Oh, she's stuck. Well, I can put it, I can start it up and drive it, but I don't wanna. Go into the lake? Yeah, I don't wanna go in the lake. Also dead. My opinion is changing pretty quick. Pretty quick. All right, Here man. Let me give you a little push. Backwards, right? Yeah. No, you're not going up there. All right, I'm gonna go. I'll put it in gear so that I can like use the clutch to slow it down or something. I like it. As long as this engine's not gonna like run backwards, is it on me? Just avoid my car. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'll take it from here. I think. Camera. Here. Good idea. <laughs> I'm making a show here. Adventures, baby. Yeah, the brakes aren't doing anything. 
I'm just using the motor being turned off in a forward gear. But if this was in, a, in reverse, it would just start up. So I'm terrified. All right, it's quite a test drive. We went 65 feet. I definitely still want a Cummins. I don't know if I want that one. What, to, what, like, what do you do? You weigh it, right? Like, stand back, look at this thing. It's sick. It's deeply awesome. It looks so gnarly. Then you get close and you're like, all right, there's rust under all the doors. Wheel wells are rotted out. And I was like, I can look past that. If I write up, it sounds good. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Even though there's like deep scale rust on the exhaust manifold and on the motor and the P pump and stuff. I'm going to take it down the road and we got 50 feet and the, the brake pedal was squishy and then gone. After I got the clutch disc unstuck from the, from the flywheel. Yeah. I don't know, man. This, but they don't want this to take us on adventures. Yeah. What do you think? Could this take us on? Man, it looks cool from in, in here. Yeah, you can't hear her. Woo! She's bad. She's bad from about 15 feet. Look at that. She's a looker. Yeah. I'm glad we didn't get out of the driveway and ha I hammered it through three gears and find out the brakes don't work. Yeah. That would be a different ending to this video. Yeah. All right. Look at more work, so. Man. Call my buddy Brendan, see what he thinks about the price. I don't think he's seen this truck in about a year and a half anyway. It certainly needs a bunch of work. It's not getting out of here today. We, we aren't towing this home with Zach's Corolla. Uh, it's not going to happen. So let's come up with a plan. I'll see you in two seconds. When we went to drive Brendan's truck and the brakes failed, I was bummed. I really liked that thing. I could see myself in it. It's got so much presence and character. It's so wicked cool. But I need to get a truck I can tow stuff with. I, I sold my Ford and I want to get something that tows better. And right now, you know, my old Land Cruiser is not going to do it. So I have found a more modern, very well-priced 2003, you know, common rail Cummins truck. I'm going to try to get my hands on that right now. And then hopefully we can get back and see about Brendan's truck because that thing's not moving under its own power. It's a 2004 Ram 2500 4x4 with the common rail Cummins. The guy was asking 9,500 bucks and after noting a bunch of issues with the truck, we agreed on 8,000 bucks and I had a whole new tow rig in hand ready to rock. So we can't just leave the truck here. It's too radical. It's too awesome. It's done more work than basically anyone I know uh, and any single vehicle to like help us do all the racing we want to do. So we're going to take it back to the shop. We're going to fix it up. We're at least going to fix the brakes and pressure wash the, the loose rust off this thing and, and turn it back into something functional. Yeah, it's just been... It's never been back in a shop. I mean, it's been maintained yeah. on the street, side of the highway. Yeah. Did a transmission in Colorado, one on the street in LA. Uh, it's got a new built NV4500 in it. It's, uh, it's a great truck. I it's just... sweet. Yeah, well, let's spend a day and a half on it and see if we can do it. Yeah. All right, you want to fire it up? Do you have any brake fluid? No. Okay, I'll let it up the truck. Wow, I haven't been in here in a couple of years. It does run. Like a top. Yeah. It's incredible that diesel, diesel doesn't right go. Into an idle, like it's crazy. Diesel doesn't go bad, really. Yeah. All right. So now Brendan is going to attempt to put his truck. We have a wider trailer this time. It's some kind of thing where you drive over the fenders and not run into the back of mine. 04 Ram that I bought but when I couldn't get this thing home. Let's see what happens. I'm very excited. Oh, he's going on backwards. He's going on back. I get it now. I going on like backwards? Back I feel like backwards is the move. Well, you're set up for it. Let's try it. Pretty good. Give me a little left. That's it. Like a glove. It's a natural break. Oh yeah, perfect. You're between them. Yeah. 
it's actually great. Is it like tight between both? What is it? Is it tight between both? Yeah, it's, you're like, it, you're not going anywhere. Hey, horn works. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I mean, we could, is the front track wider? We could have brought it on probably all the way. No, I don't think the front track's wider. All right, come on back. I'm gonna just buff those tires out for them. You're doing great. Straight, a little left, left, left. There you go, just straight. <laughs> and there she is. Quite a bit Fenders. of tongue weight, looks like. Yeah, I think I think you can go that way a foot. Yeah, we're gonna go forward, right? Quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. All right, we're all loaded up. Uh, it looks pretty sketchy. We've got, uh, we're gonna pray to Reginald G. Cummins, the patron saint of sketchy toes, and we make it home. Here we go. All right, we have the truck back in our shop. Uh, I managed to back it into this spot without any brakes. It was pretty hectic. We're all dialed in now, uh, and it's time to just dig through this thing. I think number one is clean it up. Number two, we know the brakes don't work, so I'm gonna pull all the wheels off, look for leaks. They went right to the floor when we tried to move it last time. There's certainly tons to clean up under here, and I think it's kind of like just get it back into a functional truck. Not go crazy, but like let's get it back on the road. Let's make it work. And go and just kind of give it a quick refresh and see where we wind up. Right? Right, buddy? Yes. Yeah! Yes. Inside that hood somewhere. find it outside the barn, does it still count as a barn find? Because it feels pretty barn find. If we put that in our title, we'll get mad clicks. Barn find, body swap, Ford Cummins Turbo. Two million views. So if you look in here, you can see how we got the Ford body mounted on the Dodge frame. I knocked off the old Dodge body mounts and just welded grafted in the Ford mounts, made a little pedestal mount in the front for the radiator support. It all worked out again. We were working at a crazy pace, but it worked out really well. Okay, well, we've got some brake hoses and stuff, but digging in, we knew that this tire was wet with brake fluid and the, and the pedal went right to the floor. So I assumed that this caliper went bad, but it's not dry. Brandon came in here and looked and saw that the actual hard line, which does have some kind of coating on it, is like blasted open and everything here is wet. So I, I think we're gonna have to figure out some solution to just make a new line. Right about, about doo -doo -doo, right by, yeah, you see that right under the control arm bolt? She is ruptured. That's a bummer. So the line for this is the T from here to there. Oh, really? Yeah. It's right in the side of this thing. It's right huh. there. No, that's not that hard then. As long as it comes out, we get the right fittings, we'll be okay. Yeah. Brennan, you take off that end of the brake line, I'll take off this one. We'll pull it out and try to make it. Yeah, so you got to remake wrenches. that thing and less crusty metal. So, so, I think they yeah, man, she's not. This this part's not gonna rust. No. Is that the part right there? That's it. The Dodge creates its own internal lubrication self-spraying lubrication system. Yeah. All right, so we just got one burst pipe here, huh? It's definitely that, huh? Right yeah, it's definitely now. that. Yeah. Yeah, she done. I mean, okay, so that thing's rocked. Can we Let's pop replace these it off later? What do you do? Oh you yeah, those are plastic. Those are coming right off. Over top of those we'll just weld it back in there. Yeah, should be fine. <laughs> yeah, that vulcanizing tape. A little flex seal, should be good. I will right, we'll take these tabs off. We'll get a piece of brake line and just make it up. We'll be fine. Yeah. I've got we got benders. We got if we if Colin might have some.
I'd be like 62. So I stepped on a little bit. 58 and a half. Ah, close. Pretty close. Yeah, it was right. close. See if they got a, a 60 60 one. 60 will do it. Yeah, five feet. God. Yeah, boy. Damn, those are Wegmans? Yeah, Wegmans is the best. It's not exactly pizza today. What are those, boy? Yeah, we're going to get into those. So when we don't eat pizza, we eat meat. Yeah, that's the deal. Steak lunch day. If you don't know, this is Panic. Uh, he was my dog for four years, and he's been Brendan's dog for, is that right, eight years? Uh, five and seven. Yeah, five and seven. When I started having daughters, and they were tiny, and he's a big 110-pound sweetheart, Brendan took him because we were just afraid he was too big, but he is an absolute sweet angel Rottweiler that I rescued, and he's kind of... And it's his birthday, so he's getting house steak. Eating drywall. Throw some, throw some playing cards around the edge of that wheel and hit that thing with some spray paint. What's up? So, I think they called this a peekaboo hole. I heard that once before from a, a guy behind the camera. For these. Dang, they look good. That's why we let that's why we let Barb do all the Barb stuff. Sorry, we'll get some buttes, baby. Probably time for an upgrade. Not a lot of meat on this pad here, bud. Yeah, that's why we're doing the brakes, right? No, he doesn't eat meat, but he doesn't eat it on his brake pads. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed by the level of maintenance of these pads at all. Actually, oh, I remember I did this. I did this front left caliper in Corpus Christi, 2017. You want to use them, right? You don't want them to come off looking good. Yeah. I think I actually did just this caliper. I think it was seized. So that other one might be worse because it's original. You told me two hours ago it yeah. doesn't You know, maybe we'll do him a favor, give him a fully loaded caliper back. Yeah, really happy. yeah, definitely. You got your phone? Or you got that camera there? Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Panic. Eat this big steak. You're the best. Here it is. Get it. Get it. 12 years old. That's the handsomest oh Rottweiler you've ever seen. Still an animal. Still doing it. That was. What is the rest of it? I'll give him half. I'll give him half. We'll give him. Let, we'll, I was going to let him taste himself. Yeah. Yeah, he, that's what he did. Happy he's birthday. incapable. He's incapable. That boy. He's a big, boy. beautiful animal. Look at sure we get our greens in. We, uh, we eat healthy before we eat meat. We have some stuff to celebrate. Let's talk about it, oh, right? Man. We hit 150,000 subs. Please like and subscribe. And uh, we hit 5 million views overall. 5 million? Yeah. Hell yeah. That was like a month ago, but it's all good. So we're gonna eat spinach and asparagus. Yeah. That's a big monster. And it's a big thing. So hot, it's so hot. Ow. <laughs> I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted it in my life. I wanted it in my face, but it's also so hot. Ah. It's still hot. Ten seconds. Still hot! Ago, isn't it? Guys, it's still hot. You need to come over here. Okay, this one needs to get that good hot hot. A good hot spot on the griddle. Yeah, we'll get a little spring there, that's something. Slide it off. Freaking sous chef, dude. My Barb over there. Barb's the guy. Killing it. We got three steaks medium rare coming up. And if not, we're gonna lose We're gonna lose the shot. We don't get these steaks out. We're gonna lose the restaurant. <laughs> so yeah, listen, if this YouTube stuff doesn't work out, we're definitely getting okay. a food truck. I got a pizza oven. And we'll have the world's fastest food truck. It'll be sick. Yeah, stay, stay tuned to the Stay tuned, channel. yeah. What's the, what's the telltale sign on these? Uh, how tough, like, you know, you feel, you feel the pressure. It's supposed to be like parts of your thumb. It's like, uh, you know, medium well, more rare, rare. Medium rare, rare. Ooh. You give it a little squish, and if you see the spring, 
They're getting somewhere. That's that's gonna be a good one. You gotta just worry about the thickness. They're a little bit different thicknesses, and it's you know gotta move them around the grill to keep them hot. Get them all the same nice crust on them. I the flat top yet. I made steak the other day. It wasn't enough. Go ahead in a cast iron, like just to sear the outside. Yeah. Twelve dollars probably. Copper nickel iron tubing. About it's as tall right as Tony. Ben's like a dream. Oh, shit off there. Nah, let it crust up there. I'll eat it right I mean, he's not saying much. I'm not tall too, dude. <laughs> Some expert brake line skills there. Forgot that it was uh, a couple inches longer than we needed. <laughs> Happens sometimes. What are you gonna do? We're gonna find, get, get it in there and in the middle, just pull it down a little bit more or something. Yeah, no. It's just like now all these other bends are in the wrong place. Oh, that's the, not the place you wanna be. That's fine. We can cut it and flare it if you want. Okay, so we have got the new caliper with pads on this thing, the new brake hose, Brennan bent up a new line that looks very close and should work fine. We're going to clean some of this junk out and get it in there. Yep. I think we just get this in and then worry about the clips. Oh yeah, we're really close. All right, we have new brake hard lines, hoses, and calipers in the front. I'm going to throw in this fresh Norman master cylinder. We're going to bleed this thing. And then I think the brake system will be back in business. And we'll just see about trying to give it a quick scrub down and get it back on the road. Figure out if this thing is metric or standard yet. Right, it's somewhere between 14 and 15, so maybe 9 16 I mean, you got the rust level, you never know. That's it. That's the one. You like this rat's nest of wiring over here? This is beautiful. I thought I wasn't going to mention it, but can you guys see this here? Let's give you a little turn. This is what you call concourse correct. As long as you know, the concourse is a like a outside of a shakey's sound south in the right by the dumpster. It's not great. It's a real mess here. Uh, Honestly, it's very this colorful. Was, uh, this was side of the highway. Uh, many repairs we had. Fuel shutoff solenoid went, which is a classic 12 valve Cummins thing. Uh, you know, the starter relay went. The grid heaters I had to wire in when it was freezing out. Headlights went out. You know, I always said I would rewire it, and then I rewired my rotor instead. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, this car needs one wire to run. So Yeah, which is all we hooked up when we built it. Yeah. <laughs> all that forward factory stuff coming through the firewall, there's one wire connected. Maybe two. What's in the ignition? Two wires? But, yeah, probably go through there and give it a little bit of an organizational... Once over, should be good. It's bone dry. Yeah. It smells terrible. Nice. There she is. Hold it. So we're gonna bench bleed this once it's in in place. I have these little caps in here that you just put in my hand. This is our new master cylinder from folks at Dorman. Oh, is that going to go in with the reservoir on? Yeah, maybe. So let's fill it. We're going to bench bleed it. Now we have a full, complete brake system, new master cylinder, lines, calipers, made that hard line. Hoses are new in the front. We're going to start bleeding this thing and see what happens. You want to hop up in there? Yep. Did you crack the back ones? Uh, I didn't crack them yet. Okay. I'll get in there. You're getting in there. 
Strokes of no more than one inch. No comment. So trying to bleed the brakes, started gushing out. Brake fluid right in the middle of the frame. Ran out, bought a coil of this new copper nickel. Brake line. Iron. Yeah, nickel. Is it iron too? Yeah. Copper, nickel, iron, brake line. It's super easy to work with. Uh, we're just going to make our own. Just cut it to length. Print it. Figure out the length now. We're going to throw it in here. Cut it. Flare it. Jam it in. Flare machine works. Because I screw it up once or twice. Operation two. Wow, did we pull this off? So far, so good. What is happening? All right, let's try it. Beautiful. Let's go. Press under it. Throwing it right up in the frame room. Uh, not through it, just above it. You're just going above it? Yeah, that's where it, that's where it runs. Okay. And then I'm going to go into this little factory bracket here. Tricky one to get through. No, I lost it. What's that? I don't, I don't think we're getting through there. There's just a mess of factory fuel lines are in there. In here? In the frame rail, yeah. Well, how far to go? I don't know. I can see it. We're going to keep going. Let me get that little light. Or one of them. Just a couple chairs in there. All right. All right, with a mighty shove, we got this thing all the way to the back. Now this line just has to bend up and grab a hold of that prop valve and we'll be in business. That's it, right? That's basically it. I love it. And we'll find the next problem as soon as that explodes. Yeah. Right in our face. Remember that wheel cylinder that we think is leaking? Yeah, it's probably a hard line or something. Oh. It's probably both. Well, we got enough fittings, I think, to make another set of hard lines. Ooh, that sounds super fun. All right. All right, which side am I on here? Okay. All right, yeah, hit it with some zip ties and give it a kiss for good luck. Send it on its way. So we have brake pressure in the back, we think. Yeah. Now it's time to bleed the fronts. Things are happening. I'm going to lean over here because I don't like sitting underneath this car one bit. This giant truck. Cool. Yep. All right, we're going to attempt to bleed the last corner of the car. See what happens. Starting to feel like brakes in here. Head down. Down. Up. Up. Down. Down. We have brakes? I think we have brakes. We have brakes! We have brakes! It's 10 o'clock. We have brakes. Let's go. It's a really long night here. It's finally time to drive this thing under its own power. Brendan, fire it up. over here. Yeah, I know. All right, hit it. Roll throttle. There we go. Do it. Take that thing, scrub it up, clean it up a little bit more, and see how it drives. So next morning, we've got Brennan's truck out here, and uh, it's still crusty, but man, we refreshed the whole brake system, went through all that, bled it out, looking good, put a battery in it, fires right up, we got Barb's wheels on there, we're going to take it out, give it a scrub, and then take it for a couple miles and see what this thing feels like. I'm pumped, and I'm ready to rock. All right, we're out for the maiden voyage in Brendan's rig. This thing hasn't been on the road in like three years. Put a battery in it and fired right up by itself. And we're cruising. Like, Cummins, man, the 12 valve, you can't stop them. Literally.
and literally we couldn't stop it at all but then we redid all the brakes and now hopefully it stops we may want to give a little test run since we just pulled out on the highway on well, the main road ah, it's good it feels good Woo! maybe it feels better than it ever did yeah i was gonna say it looks smooth i don't think i ever bled all the brakes well we bought them 65 times so they're tip top Taking this thing to the car wash, we're gonna give it a scrub, and then take it for a little joyride. Actually, this can be the joyride. Man, she feels good. That was almost 30 pounds of boost right there. 30 pounds of boost, yeah, that'll knock the cobwebs out. Here we go. Made it to the local car wash. Gonna do the under hood bath first. It certainly needs it. Try to avoid probably all those wires there. Uh, they're not hooked up to anything really. Your fan controller definitely has exposed circuits. I would be careful on that one. And also the turbo doesn't have an air filter on it, so maybe avoid the inlet there. What mode is this? Soapy? Uh, Pre-soak. Pre-soak. I like it. Do they have an engine bay maybe? Yeah, nice scrub after a long winter's nap. The moss that was growing on it that does it for me. I can't wait to watch that go away. That whole cow. Yeah, it's really growing some shit over there. Yarf. Orange water coming off? <laughs> no, I think you're good. It's mostly just brown and green. We will work on our friends' cars, but we make them wash them. What's that? I said we'll work on our friends' cars, but we make them wash them. <laughs> That's too far. Turn wrenches. It's so good now. And finessing. She's out of the car wash looking awesome. I feel like we really revived Brendan's truck. This thing had been just languishing in the dirt and now it's back to a ripper. Look, it's not perfect, but that patina is killer. Look at that thing, look at it. All right, let's ride. Well, this thing is completely back in action. I love this truck. I'm really glad we were able to revive it and just make it back into like 95% of as good as it's ever been. Yeah, it's killer. This is. There's nothing like this thing. It's so unique and it's so awesome. But that is actually it for this episode of Stay Tuned. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Truck stuff.